Hello again, I am Blunty, now with Pokemon Red, Pokemon Blue and Pokemon Yellow Editions all releasing on the 3DS Virtual Console in one week from when this video goes live. Some of you may be playing these games for the first time, some of you may be too young to have gone all the way back, some of you maybe never bothered with them in the first place, some of you may be old timers like me who were around when the first games came out. But there are things you need to know. If you are very used to the modern games on the modern machines, there is a lot of stuff that has changed and it will catch you out unless you remember about it or unless someone teaches you about it. So that's what this video is about. A whole bunch of stuff that has changed since these games come out that you need to know if you're going back to them or are playing them for the first time. Otherwise you will be either horribly confused, horribly frustrated, or just kind of drooling and bewildered. <laughs> stuff I need to tell you. Okay, so right off the bat, there's no player gender selection. You play as a boy, no choice, no option there. Of course, past that, there's the obvious things like being monochromatic, except for Pokemon Yellow, which does have some color in it because that was made when the Game Boy Color was a thing, and lacking any sprite animations at all for the actual Pokemon. And of course, you'll be restricted to just the 150 original Pokemon, not the 720 there are now. Although, perhaps we might get to 151 if and when Nintendo give us a way to obtain Mew in these virtual console games. Man, hey old timers, remember when 151 Pokemon names and types and movesets felt like just a ton to remember? <laughs> if we only knew. So, past the obvious surface differences, there are some significant mechanical changes that people not new to Pokemon, but at least those new to the old games, need to be aware of because it will catch you out. The generational culture shock at play here is more than just skin deep with funny looking low pixel count sprites and bleepy bloopy sounds and such. For a start, there's been huge changes to some moves over the years, not just in the variety available, but the existing moves you may be familiar with and rely on may no longer be as reliable or as powerful as you think they are. Accuracy, for example, quite a lot of moves have been made far more accurate in later titles. Back in the day, it was kind of frustrating. You'd miss a lot of the time, actually. Like Rock Throw. Since Generation 2, it has had a 90% accuracy, but back in the day on Gen 1, it was just 65% accuracy. Whirlwind is another one. You may trust it as 100% accurate these days. Nah, back in the monochromatic day, it was just 85% accurate. So you do need to keep a close eye on the descriptions of the moves when you're teaching them to your Pokemon because stuff has changed. The same is true for the power of quite a lot of common moves. Some have been significantly nerfed, others have seen big buffs in the later generations. Dig. These days it has a power of 60, but it started out at 100. Explosion. Now a chunky 250 power, once upon a time, was a comparatively weak 170. But don't be fooled because back then Explosion also cut the opponent's defense in half, effectively giving it a devastating 340 base power. Self-destruct is a similar story, although slightly weaker. And wing attack, a useful 60 power in modern times, is a nearly useless 35 on the first gen. And again, just like accuracy, there are many other differences in many other moves, so keep your eye open. And perhaps most significantly, many moves you may be familiar with as being a certain type were actually normal type moves in Gen 1. Bite, for example, isn't dark, Gust isn't flying, and Karate Chop isn't a fighting type move. Many category changes have happened too, so not only is Bite a normal move instead of dark, it's also a physical move, not special. Suffice to say, if you've got movesets you've learned to rely on, you may find them completely balked when time traveling way back to the earliest version of Kanto. Physical and special moves were based on type, so all dark, dragon, electric, fire, grass, ice, psychic, and water attacks were special, and all bug, fighting, flying, ghost, ground, normal, poison, rock, and steel attacks were physical. And effectiveness has also changed. Red, blue, and yellow saw bug and poison super effective against each other. Ice was actually neutral against fire, bug was neutral against ghost, and psychic was utterly immune to ghost. Not only that, because while these days there's ways to defrost if you get hit with the frozen status condition, back then, unless you were hit by a fire type move or haze, you were stuck, frozen. No item and no amount of time could defrost your Pokemon. It was time for a trip to the nearest Pokemon Center. And Hyper Beam could be utterly devastating back then, because back on the old code, if you KO'd a Pokemon using Hyper Beam, the usual one round recharge time of the very powerful move 
didn't apply. So you could use it again immediately after they switch in a new victim. <laughs> it was, well, it was a bit broken actually, but it was actually really fun if you're on the dealing side of that equation. <laughs> And if you get hit by wrap or bind, be prepared to be completely stalled for several moves. You can't fire off any move while trapped inside of these, although switching out will free you. Whirlwind and Roar only work against wild Pokemon in trainer battles. They literally do nothing at all but burn a turn. Accuracy dropping moves were much more crippling back then too. Even a single sand attack could just wreck your ass in a lot of circumstances. It was very frustrating. This was one of my least favorite things in the old games. Be prepared for a lot of frustrating battles if your accuracy gets dropped at all, let alone getting hit with multiple accuracy dropping moves. Oh, and there's also no false swipe move in the game at all. So catching Pokemon is that much more difficult too. You have to be super careful not to knock them out. Moving on to types, of course, there are fewer types in Gen 1. We've added more as we've gone along. There are 15 in total in Generation 1. Bug, Dragon, Electric, Fighting, Fire, Flying, Ghost, Grass, Ground, Ice, Normal, Poison, Psychic, Rock, and Water. And contrary to common belief, dual types were indeed a thing even this far back. But Steel type and Dark type Pokemon simply weren't even a thing that existed until Generation 2. And you can forget your dreams of your fairy type dragon slayer team. They didn't appear until generation 6. There's also no such thing in these games as natures or abilities. And aside from one exception, Pokemon have no genders themselves. The dual Nidoran lines being the exception. But without gender specifically in the game code, these six Pokemon got their own separate Pokedex entries between genders. And they stay that way to this day. There is no special defense or special attack stats at all, just a single combined special stat. But there is still more you need to know. There's no such thing as happiness level evolutions, and there's no breeding even. What you catch is all you've got to use. No sophisticated breeding chains for special egg moves or perfect stats here. But there is a daycare center if you're looking just to push some levels up on a Pokemon to get an evolution for your Pokedex and whatnot. Pokemon cannot hold any items at all in this game, and there's not even such a thing as berries. There's no time of day changes, no weather effects, no running shoes, that's very frustrating, no secret bases, no shiny Pokemon, because of course the original games had no color, so a differently colored Pokemon would have been a bit mm, pointless. <laughs> and get this, all kinds of Pokeballs, even the Master Ball, had a chance of missing the Pokemon completely. I'm not talking about the Pokemon popping out of it, I'm talking about you whiffing the Pokeball right past the Pokemon's head. And yes, if you can hear it in my voice, I do speak from bitter, bewildered experience, having missed a Mewtwo catch with that one and only Master Ball I'd saved specially for him. It just went whoosh, you missed the Pokemon. F you game. F you. For the record, I did eventually catch him, but it took just about every Pokeball I had in my bag. <laughs> and another big thing that's sure to catch out a few new school kids out there, technical machines, the move teaching item commonly known as TMs, are single use only. So be damn sure who you want to be teaching that move to and when. Evolutions work basically the same way, but there's only two ways to evolve. Most are by leveling up, of course. Oh, and be warned the levels at which Pokemon evolved. Yeah, those have changed over the years too. Along with which moves they learn at which levels, and that's aside from the fact that their learnable movesets may be quite different to what you think you know, as of course there's a much smaller move pool for the whole game to begin with. Oh, and of course there's no Mega Evolutions, duh. Even Eevee has far fewer evolutionary options. They evolve via elemental stones only. There's no friendship evolutions, no day-night cycle evolutions, no environmental evolutions, just the firestone, waterstone, and thunderstone. And are you a super smarty pants who likes to carefully EV train your Pokemon? <laughs> Get ready for some new math. Back here, the EV system is wildly different and it's tied directly to base stats. The experience share item also works quite differently in Generation 1. With hold items not even a thing here, the item known as Exp all, when in your key item bag inventory shares the experience equally between all of your party members. But they don't get stat experience unless they participate in battle, of course. And that is kind of like how experience share works now, but for a big whack of time in the middle there between the latest generation games and the earliest generation games, for a while the experience share item was a hold item for only one Pokemon. 
Oh yeah, and multi-directional movement. Hope you're not too used to that. Back in my day, we didn't have diagonals. Cardinal directions locked to a grid only for us, thank you very much. The Generation 1 games had some balancing issues too, as you may well imagine, with a much more limited Pokemon selection, moveset options, and combo typing than we're blessed with these days. For example, Psychic types were pretty OP back in the day, only other Psychic types had resistance to them for a start, and their only weakness was the Bug type, which itself only had three useful damage-dealing moves in the entire game. Leech Life, Pin Missile, and Twin Needle. And many of the Bug types that could even learn these were Dual Type Bug Poison type, which of course gave them a weakness to Psychic types. Combine that with the fact that the aforementioned lack of differentiation between special attack and special defense stats, and the modern fragility of Alakazam as a glass cannon, vanishes. And with the right moveset, it could make him extremely difficult to stop. And spoilers for a 20-year-old game, by the way, you will have to stop one, and it will be freaking difficult. Even ghost-type moves can't touch psychic types, like, at all. Critical hit and one hit KO move chances were based on a formula that used a Pokemon's speed stats and their level, so a quick higher level Pokemon always got far more critical hits. The lack of differentiation between special defense and special attack meant that Pokemon with a high special stat could be a pretty brutal beastie. Waking up from the sleep status costs a full turn, so forget about waking up and then attacking, prepare to be boned there as well. A substitute won't protect you from a status effect move either. And focus energy? Know how it's supposed to quadruple your chance of a critical hit? Well, a bug in the old systems made it a quarter of your chances. Do not use focus energy. You're shooting yourself in the foot. And we're still going! Multi-hit moves only roll damage once, so every successive hit does identical damage to the last. Which means if that first hit is a critical, yup, they all will be critical hits. And one of the biggest annoyances, even back then, before we had it better, was the severe limitation of bag space. You've only got 20 slots for carry items in your bag, so prepare to do a lot of inventory management and juggling. Switching stuff in and out of the PC at Pokemon Centers pretty much constantly. Otherwise, you may find yourself unable to pick up new items while out in the wild, and that is really frustrating too, especially when you find something really cool. But... In all of this, in the 20 years of game evolution, core mechanic adjustments and new features, the original game is a classic for a reason. And while even the rose-tintiest glasses of nostalgia cannot bury its age in the creaking floorboards and peeling paint and cobweb surprises that come with it, no hindsight frustration within its walls can make it anything less than a fantastic game and the start of an incredible phenomenon and absolutely worth playing whether or not you've ever played it before. Us old schoolers are going to feel fantastic in our nostalgia. You new schooler kids are going to go all the way back and went, oh, this is where it all started. Oh. But I think that's pretty much most of the essential bases covered. Slam my down below areas with your thoughts and comments. And if you feel like being a smart pants, all the many, many little things I didn't even have space to cram into this video that you're probably going to accuse me of forgetting. Hey, you forgot this. You forgot this. I didn't forget it. I just left it out. <laughs> For example, I didn't even mention the catch rates of the various and more limited Pokeball selections, because there are changes there to surprise you too, by the way. Hope you found this interesting or insightful or useful. I am Blunty. I will catch you next time.